Hello, everybody. I'm very honored to be here. The topic of my presentation is legal protection of the family in Poland, the most controversial issues. Uh, before I focus on the legal aspects of protection of family, let me begin with a few social and ideological ones. First, demography. Europe faces great and mostly unfavorable demographic challenges. The birth rate in Poland has remained extremely low since the mid 1990s. The reproductive rate required to achieve the simple rep replacement of the gender generation, that is, the average number of children born to a woman during her reproductive period, it was between 15 to 48 years of age, is 2.1. While over the last two decades, this rate has been below in Poland only 1.4. In Europe, marriage tends to be less common and divorce more common. In Poland, this number is divorces remained unchanged at around 30,000 annually between the 1960s and the 1990s. To increase significantly in the middle of the first decade of the 21st century to be current level about 65,000 divorces annually. About 2.5 million people in Poland have divorced in the 21st century. That is 7% of the adult population. Second, it's, it's women's emancipation and empowerment. One factor that significantly affects the structure and well-being of the family is women's emancipation. Emancipation is equality have given rise to a number of implications for other areas of law, especially family law and labor law. Process of emancipation has had a decisive impact on the way family members fulfill their roles. In modern family, in such a rise as family economy and the provision of care and child rearing. Women's emancipation and empowerment, obvious, inevitable, and civilizationally favorable, must have led to marriage crisis, especially in unions where men still function according to rules that govern families with so-called traditional divisions of roles. I think this is a big problem for Polish men. Among the other aspects we need to mention to migration, secularization, sexualization, but I will not get, go into them for the sake of time. Yet I have to devote some time to the ideological aspect. Currently popular philosophical and political concepts such uh, as uh, you know, Marxism, postmodernism, and gender ideology downplay the special role of the family in people's development as individuals and in the way societies function. The structure of the family as a group or originating from marriage or an informal permanent relationship between a man and a woman is questioned while same-sex unions are treated as equal, important, or sometimes more important. And attempts in, is made to question even the semantic field used to describe the family. Concept related to human sex, such as men, women, mother, father, girl, boy, are relativized. In modern literature, marriage 
and the family are described on a par with other alternative forms of union, and the individual is emphasized over the community. More emphasis is also placed on the importance of the emotional ties one has with one's current significant other than on the permanent relationships governed by nature, nature and law, the latter sometimes even depicted as oppressive. Society is here therefore extremely confused about that constitutes a family which in practice contributes to the weakening of family ties. Mutism severe symptoms of semantic inroads in language and the way of life as well as intellectual abuse in debates about the family. It should be emphasized that Poland remains a country where law Regulate, regulate marriage contracted between women and a man, that is persons of different sex and not, for example, by two persons. A mother, that is woman, gives birth to a child, that is again a person of a specified sex. A similar consistency may be observed in the use of terminology by Polish law in regulations concerning the legal situation of a child conceived but unborn yet. A child in a womb is defined as a child. In, and if the word fetus appears, it is usually qualified by the adjective human. Now let me turn to the legal aspects of the protection of family. First, the Constitution of the Republic of Poland has provisions on the relations between the state and the family. This issue touches on the constitutional principles of family autonomy and the primacy of parents in, in child rearing, which is understood as the autonomy and primacy over state institutions that govern education, healthcare, social assistance, and the administration of justice, among others. The Constitution asserts that the state may not remain passive towards the family, but should protect it and support it by implementing a social policy in favor of the family or intervening if necessary, especially for the protection of children. Again, this background then let us ask the question, what is the role of the state in, in some concrete cases? Let me begin with marriage, its contraction, and divorce. The focal point in this dispute is the admissibility of entering into marriage by same-sex couples and by mentally ill persons. Those mental impairment renders it impossible for them to fulfill marital and family obligations. Under the Polish law, marriage is a union of a man and woman, and it is performed on the basis of a consistent declaration made by them before the head of the civil registry office. And homosexual couples are allowed neither to marry nor register as partnership. Homosexuals living in long-term relationships are referred to in literature as partnership, like those cohabiting. Co co in Poland, legislative action was taken to legitimize such relationships, legitimize rather than 
legalized since homosexuality has never been illegal in Poland. The attempts found no support, however, in the Polish parliament. Until now, bills submit to parliament to regulate the functioning of homosexual couples have aimed at making changes and defining the status of their relationships as marriage, that is to grant same-sex couples the status of married couples in Polish family law. In the literature, apart from an open criticism of the idea of institutionalizing same-sex relationships and their approval, we also find a compromise solution resembling the law on the Social Solidarity Pact in operation in France, for example. It provides for the re registration of a civil partnership and the regulation of economic issues such as taxation, loans, inheritance, and higher. Such a model would require no amendment to the Polish constitution, as the registered same-sex civil partnership would not be a marriage. Another problem related to marriage construction contraction, sorry, is the marriage between and with persons with disabilities. According to Article 12 of Family Guardian Code, persons suffering from significant mental disability resulting from a serious mental illness cannot get married. In 2016, in Polish Constitutional Tribunal ruled out that it does not discriminate against sick people. The tribunal took such a position claiming that with regard to the right to marry, uh, the disabled are considered to be in a different position from intellectually sound people. Poland ratified the Convention of Persons with Disabilities, yet it appealed Article 23 that says, state parties shall take effective and appropriate measures to eliminate discrimination against, against persons with disabilities in all matters relating to marriage, family, parenthood, and relationships on an equal basis with others. The obligation implied by Article 23 is rooted in the duty to treat those persons as subjects. It is a civilizational, civilizational duty of both people and institutions, but it does not have to lead to giving the people with disabilities the same family rights and obligations, and thus imposing on them the problems which they cannot handle. Now a few words about divorce. In the debate regarding whether a divorce should be granted at the request of the spouses, or whether in it may be granted only after meeting the conditions set out in law, the position of Polish legislator differs from the measures adopted in most European countries. The divorce by mutual consent dominates and no court proceedings are involved. Instead, an administrative authority or notary may dissolve a marriage. In Poland, a divorce may be granted only in court on the grounds of a complete, complete and permanent breakdown of the marriage, as long as the divorce does not diverge from the principles of social coexistence, especially concerning the good of minor children. Evidence 
should therefore always be collected and presented before the court in order to verify the grounds for divorce. On the other hand, at the UMS request of both parties, the court may grant a no-fault divorce and refrain from educating on access to any children. The divorcing spouses may also prepare a child custody proposal. The court will accept the agreement if its provisions do not contradict the best interest of the child. Now let me focus on children. The most controversial debates concerning children concern unborn children. The reason why abortion is discussed in the context of family life is that it concerns a child living in its mother's body. And this indirectly also applies to the child's relationship. She has set up a tumult of emotions in Poland creating social tensions and political dispute over the conditions for the admissibility of abortion is Article 38 of the Constitution, ensures the legal protection of the in 19. The Constitutional Tribunal took the to protect unborn conception. In enumer enumerates, however, three exceptional circumstances that enable the termination of pregnancy. Under the Polish law, abortion is permissible if the conception of a child is a consequence of punishable act. When the pregnancy endangers mother's health and life, and if the child is permanently damaged, but in the judgment in 2020, the Constitutional Tribunal ruled the admissibility of performing an abortion on the basis of the last premise is inconsistent with Article 38 and 30 of the Constitution, as it discriminates against unborn persons with disabilities. To continue with children, but now the born ones, in Western Europe, disturbing changes may be observed in the relationships between the state and parents. In particular, it's some legal measures which undermine uh, the primacy of parents in raising children, clearly spelled out in the convention on the uh, rights of the child. Few European countries today once more are passing regulations that undermine the importance of parents. The legislative changes introduced may be seen in semantic shifts. Uh, I already talked about it. Another example of such interference are regulations or postulate, postulates for the introduction, which ignore parents' opinions on such issues as access to contraception, abortion for minors, and recently gender reassignment. Attempts of this kind have already been observed in Poland, for example, when discussing the role of foster families, which undermines the right of the child to be reunited with the family. Poland is seen is a scene of a debate over reproductive rights. In this debate, the basic question raised is whether adults have the right to have children, which is correlated with the state's obligation to ensure a child to anyone who requests it. 
through adoption or artificial methods of procreation. Does it concern everybody that is singles or all couples, either married, cohabiting, or same-sex couples? At the other end of the spectrum, it is more often claimed that adults have the right not to have children. The consequence of the latter right is the state's obligation to guarantee abortion at the request of a pregnant woman regardless of the circumstances. Treating the reproductive right as human right may be commented on by Kotin Leszek-Kowakowski, the renowned Polish philosopher who said, the doctrine on human rights disseminated throughout our civilization and atmosphere in fin infinite claim couched in the language of those rights. All crimes, whether justified or unjustified, rational or absurd, arising out of a real and painful poverty or arising out of mindless envy may be presented in our culture in terms of human rights and their violations." End quote. As regards so-called reproductive rights, a heated dispute rages in Poland over the administrability of abortion. The use of technology supporting pro procreation is regulated by the Act of 2015 on the treatment of infertility, which introduced the prospect of performing in vitro procedures paid by some local government. Uh, So-called surrogate motherhood and the contracts have always been invalid. At last, but not least, some words about adoption and foster care. In recent years, adoption has been less Professor, uh, sorry for the interruption. Uh, sorry for the interruption, but uh, I have to uh, uh, call your attention to the time limits. Uh, may I ask you to summarize the end of your presentation? Okay. Uh, I think about, about adoption and foster care, I uh, will talk uh, in another time. It is the last uh, subject. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm sure that Polish law is better than my English. I'm sorry for my mistakes. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>